Ever wanted to learn how to harness your body's energy in order for it to work for you? Today, Teresa shares how we can become more aware of our energy vibe and how it affects our body. Plus, during these challenging times, who couldn't use a little bit more hope, perseverance, and focus? But before we jump in, let me tell you a little bit more about our sponsor. So please stick around and enjoy the show. And welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea on Confidence Drive. I'm your host, Tanya Tyler, and I'm excited because today we're going to talk to Miss Teresa, who's going to share her, her insight on energy and how we can make that work for ourselves instead of repelling it. You know, so without further ado, I'd like to bring on Miss Teresa Vermillion. I hope I pronounced that correct, please. You did. Sounds great. Hi. <laughs> it's great to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure always to talk to you. We, we've met at network and events, and um, you always share some great insight because I know you do a little bit of personal training on the side, correct? Yes. And so you always have this cheerful attitude, uh, great enthusiasm when you come to the network meeting. So it's always great to like, talk to you and see what you're working on. And I thought it was a great way to bring you on here and share some of your great work that you're doing. So thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. I really appreciate that. Yes. Well, I know we had a little talk and I, we were talking about energy work and stuff like that. So with this COVID-19 and stuff that's been in place, how important is like um, considering energy work right now? How important is it to really get your energy vibes going good? Wow. That is um, super, super important um, because there's so much going on and we've got so much coming at us. And a lot of the ideas with the, um, with the energy is that um, if you are aware of it and you're aware of your thoughts and you're aware of what that vibe is doing for you as we get information in and what that does for your vibe. And if you're aware of what it, it, what that does in your body and how you feel those vibes, then you're able to shift them. So right. that we're not just living in this, in, um, a, there's a lot of fear out there right now. And a lot of, um, I would say, I would say it's a negative vibe. I'd say there's some negativity and it, it takes a lot of work to manage that with your mind. But if you know how and what you're doing and have worked on it, then it, it really can serve you. Right, right. To deal with it. I mean, I know, like, so with, we got a lot of stuff that's going on, and I'm not here to, to, you know, debate and discuss all that stuff. So, I mean, how do you, like, eliminate a lot of that negativity flow? Like, is there some, like, I would say, like, one tip that you would share to help people, like, focus on getting that energy out of their, the negative energy out of their life? Oh, yeah, of course. There's lots of good tips for for getting, for shifting that energy. Um I'd say number one, like pay attention to your thoughts. What are your thoughts? Because our thoughts often trigger our feelings. So if we're having a negative thought, we're going to have a negative feeling. And then a lot of that, that brings down our vibe. And then that's where we start to, um, like, we try to numb those feelings then because they're negative. We feel like we've been taught that we don't want to feel those negative feelings. So that's when we start to do you know, the extra, like, let's just go to the kitchen and get something to eat because I don't want to feel these feelings sometimes. And we don't realize that's what our bodies are doing, but that's what our, our bodies and our brains are doing. Same, you know, and that's like, well, let's just have another cocktail because I don't want to feel these negative feelings that are in my body. So if you're aware of those thoughts that are causing those feelings, and that's, um, then, then you can think like the easy ways of shifting are just like doing breath work journaling, moving your body, just get out and go on a walk, change your scenery, get outside, um, dance, you know, put on some music and that and putting on music really is one of the best ways I think that you can shift that vibe pretty quickly. Right. I know I, I, I can definitely attest to that because like I said, when you're feeling blue, you know, I just pop on a good song that makes you get up and move inside that energy. So I always think is like moving the energy is like moving that shift 
I, I would say that stale energy, is that basically what you're doing? It's like getting the energy moving so you can um, like yes. let go the negative for the positive? Yeah, so like when is, is what we're taught, it, or the, the thinking now is like everything is energy, right? We are energy, everything around us is energy. And there's um, negative energy and there's positive energy, right? And so um, positive energy attracts positive energy and negative energy attracts negative energy. So if we choose to put out those positive vibes, we are going to attract positive energy. And so that all feeds off of each other. And if we're choosing those negative vibes or we're not choosing to shift away from those negative vibes, we're going to attract more of that negative energy. And I think that's where people do start to feel stuck or go down those spirals and things like that. Right. Um, instead of just like realizing what we're doing and then trying to shift it. Does right. That make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I, and I know a lot of, that's like a lot of deep work. So Really it is a lot of deep, it is a deep very, It sounds very woo too, you know? <laughs> I mean, like, oh, but, but there's so much to it that. It, you well, I like, you know a lot of people don't, I mean, I'm not saying a lot of people don't. It took me a little while to go in and start doing my, my work. So, I mean, it takes a little while for you to get to that point. But I mean, where did, really, where did your journey like start on this? That's a great question. I hate, um, because uh, let me think. Um, my background is in education. I have a degree in education. Um, we, I raised my kids, and it's hard because I wish I knew so much of this earlier, right? But of course, perfect timing. There's a reason why I know it now, and you just you can't go back and and wish any of that um, away. Things are the way we're on our paths for a reason, and and not and by design, I think. Um, so about 10 years ago, my second career was, like you said, a personal trainer. I became a personal trainer and then um, became a certified health coach so that I could, you know, do more with my clients. And um, I, I think just reading books and looking for ways to improve myself, I think just having that self-awareness and realizing that there's a way to grow. So um, as I was working as a personal trainer, I... Um, had an injury to my back that was, it was there, but then there was a sudden change to the injury that required me to have back surgery. And um, I remember like being afraid, not, I wasn't afraid to do the surgery. I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> so that was, um, you know, cause nobody wants to do that. Right, right. And so after the surgery, I remember thinking, you know, like I going, I can't believe I did this. And then I had that conversation with myself, like you better get it together because you need to heal. And I knew that if I sat there and thought negative thoughts, that that affects your body, that sits in your body. And I was like, so I like started, you know, and I guess I would have, you know, um, See what other people were doing. Like I would have conversations with my back. Like I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be heat. I'm going to heal. You are healthy. Um, I started learning to um, write a mantra for myself that that will, you know. And and when you do mantras, they're great, but they need to be true for you. You can't just say something that's not true because your brain will know it's not true, and it won't believe it. So um, you know. But that was part of my mantra. I am healthy. Um, and I'm strong. That was super important to me. So I think too, just reading the books, know it, paying attention to who's out there and what they're saying. And um, one of the books that really helped me shift a lot was You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. And that was a big shift for me. I think a, an eye opener, like, oh, um, yeah, you just keep going down that. That's not a dark rabbit hole. That's a really fun rabbit hole. <laughs> It is. It is. It's, I mean, like you said, it's, it, I, my journey started about 10 years ago as well. So I don't know. It was like, does it come to a certain degree in your life that, you know, you know, it's like, poof, you know what? Mm -hmm. Figure out who you really are this time, you know? So it's yeah. like, yes. I'm fine. So I'm, I love the journey. So it's, you talk about mantras and I, I know you shared um, something about I am healthy. So I, we talked about your, you talked about your three words. So yeah. what, what are your three words that you are like living your life by right now? I like that you said right now because they are <laughs> my current three words. Um, and, I, and I just think that's so fun too, that um, not only do we sometimes pick words, I know some like, it, it was very much more popular at the beginning of the year, like what's your word for the year and pick your word for the year. And I thought that was interesting because I've been doing this for several years. And again, I 
wish I could pinpoint the time and the place where I had that aha moment, but um, words have been picking me for a few years, usually a phrase, like, you know, one year it was all in, um, one year it was right now, because you just need to start now. Um, so uh, at the beginning of this year, the word, my word, I kept um, seeing show up, the words keep going. So my word for this year is perseverance. But when this, the COVID shutdown started and all of this broke out, um, I had to take, you know, I took a minute, like, like everybody else, but then I was, thank goodness, I was able to shift somewhat quickly um, because of the work I've been doing with, you know, mindset and positivity and energy and all of that. And then um, I thought, okay, what, what does the world need? What does, what do we need now? And the three words that came to me were um, hope, perseverance, and focus. And when, which was fun because perseverance was my word for this year. And so, um, and it, it's really been fun because I've been digging into hope. Like when you think of the word hope, hope feels like it's just wishful thinking, right? And mm -hmm. it's kind of a fluffy word. And, um, but actually hope is really a great tool to have in your toolbox. Um, it is, to have hope means that you have to believe in the future. So it also means that you have to prepare for that future you believe in. And the example I use where the pool's getting ready to open up, you know, like you, right. I walk by a pool and you see the cover is off, it's filled up, the chairs are lined up, they're out of storage. The, po the pools don't open until Memorial Day weekend typically, you know, but you have to be prepared for what we expect to happen in the future. So. Um, there have been some really great researches done um, it, by people about athletes and their hope and how that drives them. And the other analogy used for that was um, like if you have this really awesome sports car in your garage, like so you know, the sports car is your skills, your talent, your, um, your hard work, all of those things that come together. But hope is what drives the car down the road. So. Right. That was it. And then um, going on, uh, perseverance is just the act of not giving up, especially when things get hard, you know, and, and things, sometimes things get hard and we're like, well, okay, I can manage this. And then they get harder. And you're like, okay, push through this thing. And then they get harder. And you're like, come on world, what is going on? But you, we persevere, right? The right. fact that we're here today means that we are persevering no matter what. Right. So no matter how hard things get, you just keep pushing through. And that is one of, if you were to, to do an internet search for um, what makes someone successful, you're going to find the word perseverance every single time, because especially as entrepreneurs and, um, you know, people that are out there chasing a dream that looks different to other people, perseverance is super, super important. And then the third word was focus. Um, and that goes back to a little bit of that energy. You know, we have to focus on the good, focus on what it is we're really after. And again, when you're an entrepreneur, you have those dreams that look a little different than everybody else's dreams. It's easier for, I say easier for us, easy. It's, we can get distracted easily. We can lose that focus because it doesn't look like everybody else. And so when if other people question us that it would make us question ourselves and if we just stay focused on to our own truth what we know we are going after and know that we can make it happen with our perseverance and our hope then um, that is absolutely um, what we need to do you know and when we feel those negative feelings come in or that negative energy we if we're able to refocus that then um, that's what that's also going to get us through how do you shift into those words like you uh i know you said it starts with your awareness so i mean do you just let the words come to you or do you you know how did you get to the part of finding the words do they just come to you or do you look them up and find the meaning behind them and then live that way you know how did you come about with those three words um honestly they came to me i feel like you know i feel like a lot of i never say that my ideas are really my own i really think that they're god-given i think that the spirit talks to me and gives me those ideas because I get a lot of ideas all like that's one of my frustrations like I have so many ideas that I can't act on them all fast enough um, but I do like even when I'm working with my clients and something 
um, profound happened. So I know that that was not all of my own work. I feel like we're, they're, we're, they're gifts that were given. Um, right. So yeah, I do feel like those words were, were given to me, but I have so much fun with words. Like I do, like I do that, go look at the word up and does, what does this mean? And does it mean what I think it means? And does it fit in this part, you know, like even with my, um, my own business and doing like energy. I love to like look up the word energy because that can go a lot of places and vibration, you know, of people oh, talk yeah. about a really good vibe, which is, you know, positive energy, right? You walk into a coffee shop, you're like, wow, this place has a great vibe or we get vibrations from people, you know, and a lot of people talk about that as like, that's our, our gut reaction, our gut instinct, which is also very true. We need to listen to those gut instincts. And I think I'm getting off topic a little bit, but I'll just share with you about your gut. Oh, go ahead. You can. <laughs> we can come back to words, the words <laughs> and how we find them. But um, our guts actually, like, you know, our brains and our guts talk to each other. And we, we, and this goes back to, it does go back to the thoughts and feelings. We think that our brains are in control. What we have learned, what scientists, researchers have learned, is that we have more nerves going from our gut to our brain, sending messages to our brain, then we have messages going from our brain to our gut. Isn't that oh. crazy? Yeah, so, so it's like your, your brain is more like the um, control, control center. Mm -hmm. But your gut is really what knows what's going on. Oh, okay. Because, and that goes it back to, too, that's a great reason to eat healthy and keep your gut healthy. You, I, even at, like, because it all happens on a cellular level and our intuitive level, but it's all like it's connected on a level that we don't even know yet. For that passion to really to spark, what was it that you really like helping, hoping to help people with, you know? I think this realization that we really are in control of the direction of our lives. A lot of people go through life feeling like life is happening to them like they don't have choices, like they are stuck where they are, whether it's a job that they're not happy with or um, relationships that they're not happy with or, you know, whatever, um, you know, that with a body that they think they're not happy with, that they can choose to think differently about that and they can choose to change it. And I know everybody's got difficult circumstances or some kind of a difficult past um, so to say that you can shift it, I, I don't take that lightly. I know um, it, you can't just do it. I mean, if it's something small, you can do it on a dime, of course. But if it's, you, you, you know, if you're really unhappy with your life and you're really ready to make those changes, like a lot of us stay stuck because it's easier to stay stuck than it is to make the changes. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier to stay in the pain we know than to change to the pain that we don't know. But that's, I think, where I get excited. Like if people realize how much power they really have, how much control you have over your own life and being able to make those shifts, that if you decide to do it, you can do it. You might need to work with somebody or do some um, investigation or research on your own and learn how to do it. It's, I'm not saying you wake up doing it just because you decided to, but there are a lot of people that would help you make those shifts if that's what you're ready to do in your life. Right. And that goes across the board. That is relationships, body, eating, food, dieting, thoughts, behaviors, beliefs, work, job, dreams, goals. You know, it, it crosses the board. Right, right. Like I said, you have, I mean, it's amazing how fast time flies. And I say this all the time, especially when you're having a great conversation. But I mean, for those who really want to find more information, and I don't want to cut up, where can people find find you? They can find me at... On Facebook, just find Teresa Vermillion. I think it's T Vermillion one, um, and they can email me at uh, Teresa at fitnessempowermentproject.com. But um, Facebook is really my primary hangout, so they can find me on Facebook. My Facebook group is currently called. Um, I'm gonna. I say currently. I'm gonna change the name of it soon. I'm in the middle of rebranding a few things. Um, fitness, food, feelings friends and fun okay. is my Facebook group. So find right. me there. Well, Miss Teresa, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It has been a pleasure with me as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> Always a good time hanging out with you, Tanya. 
Oh, it's, uh, and I always learn something new. So that's, that's a great thing though. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And I hope that people reach out to me because I would love to connect with any, with you. All right. Well, again, thank you for joining in. Feedback is always welcome. Email me if you have any guests or show ideas. Links will be posted in the comments, like I said. Please like, share, and subscribe. And always remember, take things in stride, go with the flow, and create your own path. So again, thank you for joining us. Question of the day, what are your three words? Please put them in the comments and share with us.